Hi there, and welcome to this podcast. Today, an interesting topic for you to practice your English skills on. Do you know people who've been in a relationship and they've broken up and got back together again? There was an article in a UK newspaper this week in The Guardian with the title, Will You Marry Me Again? The Rise of Divorce Regret. So this newspaper article was talking about the number of people who get divorced in the UK. That's the verb to divorce, D-I-V-O-R-C-E, meaning when married couples separate. Divorce regret may mean that people get back together again and they marry a second time. Apparently this is on the rise. So let's learn some vocabulary around relationships today. Words like divorce, reconcile, and regret, which will help you speak confidently in everyday English conversation. So stay tuned to enrich your vocabulary. But also, if you have married someone, regretted it and married them a second time, why on earth would you do that? If you come from a country or a culture where divorce is not common or where it's useful for your family to influence your choice of partner, this may be an interesting and different perspective for you. And if you live within a culture where divorce is an option and commonplace, it's interesting to think about why would someone marry a partner a second time. As a psychotherapist, I often think there's nothing as fascinating as people and their relationships. And I do sometimes work with couples and I work a lot with individual people on their relationship difficulties. So maybe I can help shed some light on this topic. There's also so much useful vocabulary to learn. Don't forget to listen a number of times and stay with me until the end to discover why 10 to 15 percent of couples who divorce Get back together, something you probably didn't expect. And some thoughts on the positives of arranged marriages too. Going to be an interesting one. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. And if you like the Adept English podcast and you've experienced the power of regular listening to help you improve your English, you might like more than this once weekly podcast. Lots of options. You can pay a small fee per month to join our subscription service and get eight extra quality podcasts every month. Or if it's difficult for you to listen online, you can download 50 of our quality podcasts in one go for a small fee. There are hundreds of podcasts to choose from. For both of those options, go to our website at adeptenglish.com. Our topic today, what if divorce isn't always the end of a relationship? You might be surprised to hear how many couples reconcile. That's R-E-C-O-N-C-I-L-E. To reconcile means to get back together. Western countries are well known for their soaring divorce rates. Soaring means they soar, S-O-A-R, and to soar means to fly high. One alarming statistic, which is often quoted for the UK, nearly half of marriages end in divorce. We're told in the Guardian article, the average adult may have five relationships and fall in love three times. That's unlucky in love for two of them then. That's an interesting average and sounds realistic for those of us who have choice whom we date and what relationships we choose. We're also told that the divorce rate of nearly 50% is now falling in the UK. That sounds encouraging, but then the reason is given because fewer people can afford it. It just costs too much. So people are choosing to stay in their relationships instead. Some might argue that that's a good thing, that divorce shouldn't be super easy because relationships always hit difficult patches. And if there's an emphasis on staying married, people are encouraged to work at it. I think that's true in some cases. A world where people can too easily leave committed relationships may mean that it's not usual to work on your relationships. And relationships do take work. 
On the other hand, people do need to be able to escape a bad relationship, don't they? So what's interesting here is the rise in the number of people who marry, divorce and then remarry, marry a second time. Why would someone do that? If we look at celebrity couples for a minute, the most famous couple probably to do this, the actors Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. They had a long romance and many other partners and marriages, but they married and divorced, then remarried and re-divorced. Make your mind up, folks. But apparently this phenomenon of the to-and-fro relationship is more common amongst famous people. The actor Ben Affleck and singer and actor Jennifer Lopez were engaged to be married in 2002, broke it off, were separate for nearly 20 years and then came back together in 2022 and they married in June of that year, only to divorce in August 2024. Sounds expensive. And recently the golfer Rory McIlroy called off his marriage and now it's back on again. Even Elon Musk married the actor and author Tallulah Riley twice. It ended in divorce a second time, unfortunately. And further back in time, the artist Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera, they married twice too. That's an interesting one. There was a 22-year age gap in that relationship. So these well-known couples seem afflicted by that phenomenon, the can't live with you, but can't live without you. That's where you're really attracted to someone, but you realise that the relationship you have with that person isn't healthy, possibly isn't good for either of you. There's often too much passion and not enough of the dynamics which give relationships staying power. If something has staying power, it means it has the capability, the capacity to last. But amongst couples who are not rich and famous, apparently 10 to 15% of people who divorce get back together again. They don't necessarily marry but they do reconcile. And many of the people who get divorced express regret. Regret here, R-E-G-R-E-T. That's when you wish you hadn't done something. Do you remember the song Je ne regrette rien by Edith Pia? Perhaps you know that one. Perhaps the problem is that if we're left to choose our romantic partners ourselves, a lot of it is what we call the chemistry. By that, we mean the magic ingredients that make someone attractive to us. Sometimes it's difficult to identify what the reasons are for that attraction. Often it doesn't make sense. As a psychotherapist, I find those reasons are often deeply buried in our psyche, in the psychological part of ourselves. We don't always understand them unless we look at them. And sometimes when we have a strong attraction to someone, we ignore the downsides. We turn a blind eye to the negatives. We are drawn into the relationship anyway. And if we marry someone, we need to learn to live with them. Sometimes the negatives can be negotiated, made gradually into positives through having conflict, through having argument, and then discussing it and agreeing a way forwards afterwards. But sometimes the negatives are just too great. And that's often when couples move towards separation and divorce. And sometimes divorce is the best idea for some couples. Sometimes that person is just not good for you. But it's also true to say that we need different things from our relationships across our lifespan, across the time that we're alive. It's also true that we mature and often have a greater understanding when we're older of ourselves and other people. We often have more of what you call empathy, E-M-P-A-T-H-Y. That means the ability to feel and understand what others experience. We say we empathise with people and we learn greater patience when we're older. Our priorities might be different. We're less impulsive, more thoughtful. So it seems that a significant number of people Look at the partner they divorced years ago and they wonder, maybe things could be better with that person now. The old attraction is there, but we've matured as people. Maybe we could make it work this time. 
Esther Perel is a well-known couples therapist and writer. She talks about how the demand on marriage is much greater in modern times. We used to live much more in communities than we do in the modern Western world. So we weren't looking to our husband and wife to fulfill quite so many of our needs. There was a whole community and extended family to do that for us. And also, we live longer. The person that you chose to be in relationship with at 18 may not suit you when you're 58 and may not be the best person to be with when you're 88. Or maybe they've improved by then. Esther Perel talks about how unreasonable it sometimes is to expect one person to fulfil your needs across a 70-year period of potential relationship. And sometimes people go into marriage with unreasonably high expectation. Happy ever after is a phrase in fairy tales in English. There's probably no such thing. As you grow older, you realise that relationships cannot be perfect, but they can still have more positive than negative in them. An article in Psychology Today by Anne Gold Bushow published June 2022 and called Why Many Divorce Partners End Up Remarrying Each Other backs all of this up. Here's a quote from that article so that you can practice with some English that's slightly more difficult. She says, if a problem has been resolved, such as lack of intimacy or financial stress, couples may reconnect. Problems such as substance abuse, neglecting the marriage and over-focusing on career, and loneliness due to lack of attention from a partner. These are problems that can be resolved. The author comments that this can happen through therapy, but it also happens with time. People develop greater thought and patience. And what's interesting too, in cultures where marriages tend to be arranged, meaning that the families help match people based on things beyond physical attraction. They look at shared values, financial backgrounds, religious beliefs, basically the things that matter in the long term. And usually where culturally the expectation is that you'll marry someone that your family have had influence in choosing, there are usually mechanisms, ways in which young couples in this situation are helped and supported to gain these good relationship skills. Often these are what counts in the end for making a successful partnership or marriage. Of course, that's where arranged marriage works well. It can be a different story for some people. The couple in the Guardian newspaper article talk about how their children teased them. They got remarried on the same date as their original wedding day. So their children tease, is this your fourth or your 36th wedding anniversary today? In the UK, the law around divorce changed in 2023. Couples now have no fault divorce. If someone is said to have fault, it means, oh, the problem is theirs. With no fault divorce, Simply saying that your relationship has broken down, that's enough. Previously, the situation was that the couple had to agree who was at fault, who had done wrong and caused the end of the relationship. As you can imagine, this caused enormous conflict. So perhaps no fault divorce also paves the way for more people to reconcile and marry a second time. That will be interesting to watch. Let us know what you think of this podcast and this subject. And don't forget to listen a number of times to really anchor those new words and phrases into your mind, into your brain. Remember also, you are unconsciously learning English grammar every time you listen. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.